Hi everyone, I am Nain Singh and we are going to start the Jazz Theory book by Mark Levin, day one. So, in order before starting the video, I would like to tell that I am no jazz musician and everything I know about jazz is the blue scale, which I learned from uh, YouTube itself from some channel. So. I am doing this video in order to know the potency of the jazz theory book and also so that I can set up a level for the people who are ambitious about learning jazz. So let's get started. The endorsements. Okay, we'll just skip the endorsements right now. Jazz Theory Book by Mark Levin. Okay. I have heard a lot about this book, so that's why I'm trying it right now. And I'm having some problem with this. Okay, so here are the contents, and we'll just go through the contents uh, at first. The Jazz Theory Book by Mark Levin, author's note, acknowledgements, introduction, a note on terminology and chord symbols, glossary. Okay, and then starts the part one. So I think that the five topics that are written above the part one are, uh, you know, the basics. So that's, I think that's the most important part of the book. So we won't be, you know, skipping it and we will be doing it at first. Okay, apart from that, we have part one theory, chords and scales. Yeah, that's obvious. Chapter one, basic theory. Okay, okay. So basic theory start from here. Okay, we'll just see that what the above topic means which is happening the major scale and the 2-5-1 progression a very famous progression of jazz music and I have I've quite seen a, quite a number of videos of, on this uh, on YouTube itself chord scale theory okay major scale harmony melodic minor scale harmony diminished scale harmony whole tone scale harmony okay so I have no idea about this whatever it is <laughs> uh, okay so how to practice scales okay how to practice scales chapter 4 chapter 5 is slash chords and then the part 2 of this book tells us how to improvise playing the changes uh, from scales to music okay the bebop scale uh, another very famous scale of the jazz playing outside pentatonic scales here yeah. the blues that you know i just played right now uh, rhythm changes practice 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 okay reharmonization basic reharmonization advanced reharmonization Coltrane changes, yeah, I've heard about Coltrane changes a lot. Three reharmonizations, John Coltrane's reharmonization of spring is here. Kenny Barron's reharmonization of spring is here, okay. John Coltrane's reharmonization of body and soul. Then we come on to the part four, that is the tunes. And it consists of song form and composition, reading a lead sheet, memorizing a tune, heads, the repertoire and then the, comes the part 5 the rest of it salsa and latin jazz loosens listen index okay <coughs> photography directory okay i don't think that's much of use for us uh, author's note okay yeah we go to the author's, author's note first i was fortunate to have some great teachers a new york jazz pianist Joe Pace introduced me to the beauty of 251 progression. I spent two years studying with great Jackie Byard, followed by a year that anyone else with sorry, followed by an year with Hall Overton who knew more about Thelonious Monk's music. Now what is Thelonious Monk's music? Who should be written over here? Hall held Mong with the big band arrangements for Mong's 1959 album at Town Hall Fantasy Records. I have no idea about whatever it is, but it sounds pretty interesting. Uh, I spent a year or so studying with Herb Pomeroy, one of all the all-time great jazz educators. Okay, so this is Mark Levin's actually what how he came to jazz and all. I learned more in a single afternoon with Barry Harris than is found in most jazz harmony books. Okay. 
Most of what I have learned, however, is from the masters themselves by transcribing directly from recordings. Every great jazz musician has gotten the best part of his or her education. Okay, let me just clear this out. Every great jazz musician has gotten the best part of his or her education by transcribing. Okay. Learn how to do it easily and skillfully. Hopefully, I know it. I've been lucky enough to work with and learn with Woody Shaw, Joe Henderson, Bobby Hutchison, Dave Liebman, Sony Sid, Mill Jackson, Art Farmer, Blue Mitchell, and a lot of names over here. Quite tough as well, so I'll just skip them. I value any comments you may have about this book, okay? Please don't hesitate to write me care of my publisher, Chuck Share, okay? I don't think we'll have any problem with this book. Mark Levin records for Concord Jazz and is active on the San Francisco Jazz scene, okay? That's good. Both with his own trio and as a sideman with many bands, he is currently on the faculty of both the San Francisco Conservatory of Music and Mills College and teaches at the following summer jazz camps Journey Ever Soul, the Stanford Jazz Bookshop, and a lot of names. Okay, acknowledgements. That's, let's see if this has some more to do with us. Although the author usually gets all the credit, books are a collaborative effort here. Yeah. In the case of this book, that's an understatement. Many friends and colleagues helped immensely on this project, and I'd like to thank each of them. That's great. To Chuck, share my publisher. Thanks for your constant support. Okay, that's, I don't think that's much of much important. Okay, we just we just skip it again. Please pardon me, guys. But <laughs> uh, introduction. Yeah, a great jazz solo consists of one percent magic, a ninety-nine percent stuff that is explainable, analyzable. Sorry. Categorizable and doable. Okay, okay. So it uh, he says that um, any jazz solo has one percent magic and ninety nine percent of explaining, analyzing, and categorizing it, and also doing it. Obviously, this book is mostly about the ninety nine percent stuff. That is, yeah, the stuff except magic. There is no one single all inclusive jazz theory. In fact, that is why the subject is called jazz theory rather than jazz truth. Yeah, the only truth is in the music itself. Theory is the little intellectual dance we do around the music, attempting to come up with rules so we can understand why Charlie Parker and John Coltrane sounded the way they did. There are almost as many jazz theories as there are jazz musicians. That's the way. It Line of the, the whole segment until whatever we read right now. Uh, we'll read it again. There are almost as many jazz theories as there are jazz musicians. True. Having said this, it's okay to come back to reality and state that there is a common thread of development in jazz theory, a thread that has evolved logically from the earliest days of jazz through Louis Armstrong, James P. Johnson. And a lot of names over here. Um, and beyond. All these musicians could have played with each other and understood one another. Even though their terminology may have differed. Yeah. Louis Armstrong recorded with Duke Ellington. Duke Ellington recorded with John Coltrane. And all three sounded as... They enjoyed the, as though they enjoyed the encounters. Okay, I'll, I'll just skip the next uh, para. I guess we'll just read it. When you're listening to a great solo, the player is not thinking two five one blues like A A B A, altered scale and so forth. He or she has done that already many years ago. Experienced musicians have internalize this information to the point that they no longer have to think about it very much if at all. The great players have also learned 
what the chords and the scales look and feel like on the instrument be aware of what your eyes see and what your hands feel when you play okay. do this just as much as you focus your mind on the mental stuff and you will get beyond theory yeah where you just flow with the music aim for the state of grace when you no longer have to think about theory and you will find it much easier to tap into the magical one person so basically what uh, mark wants to mark is saying in the book is that we need to conquer the 99 person part and we'll uh, get to know the one person magical stuff on our own in order to reach this point of mastery you will have to think about and practice theory a great deal that's the 99 person part and that's what he's going to tell us in this book as he had stated it earlier the piano well i do not have a piano right now uh, so this is my keyboard and i'm using a yamaha psr e303 and i'm going to buy a new one very soon many of the examples in the book are written for piano okay you do not need any piano technique to use this book you just need to be able to read notes thankfully i know uh, not from very long time but like from the past 4 to 5 months so that's that might help but i still take a lot of time in reading so i just whenever some sort of this sort of thing comes up in the book i'll just pause the video and i'll just analyze it i'll take my time and then i'll resume the video from where he had left and then i'll do the first stuff you just okay because many people reading this book won't be pianists yet yeah, one of me is i am one of them many of the piano transcriptions have been simplified and are marked as such oh thank you thank you mom if a piano example looks too difficult for you to decipher have your teacher or a piano playing friend to play it for you okay okay so i have a lot of friends and oh, and one of my friends has have has, has given me this book and he is such a great guy i'm blessed to have such people around me and like other instruments the piano lets you see what you play and that makes it easier to put all the pieces together almost all the great jazz players regardless of instrument play some piano yeah this includes mark roach a lot of names i don't know any of them so i'll just skip some of them played well enough to record on piano including basses Charles Mingus and drummers Jack Dejonet and Joy Chambers. How good do you want to be? There are certain prerequisites for for becoming for becoming a good jazz musician. You must have talent. Oh my God! You must have a uh, talent, ears, time, a sense of form. Okay. so in under talent he has uh, given some examples like ears time a sense of form now i know what ear means what time means but i don't understand a sense of form so if you guys anyone knows about it please comment down second is the direction exposure to the right music for you okay third is education that is teachers and mentors people around you who teach you music or who you are with you ambition ambition i am quite very ambitious about jazz music and i i i spend a lot of my day uh, listening to jazz music so yes i am very ambitious i am number 4 ambition okay so he is right now talking about ambition which is the fourth part is perhaps the most important of all though that's right i don't mean ambition in the sense of wanting to be a star okay but in the sense of having the will desire and stamina to practice practice is a very important practice today if you don't have this quality all the talent in the world means nothing as you go through this book lots of questions will come to your mind and perhaps you will have the good fortune to have a teacher or mentor that can answer them okay i have a, i have a teacher and i have a very good teacher actually so i i feel lucky about it a good thing to remember however is that the answer to all your questions is in your living room 
your cd or record collection okay cd or record collection contains the history theory and practice of jazz almost all the great jazz musicians of the modern era learned most of their licks and gained most of their theoretical knowledge from listening transcribing and analyzing tunes and solos from records yeah that's true starting start learning how to transcribe now it may seem difficult at first but the more you do it it's easier it the easier it gets good luck and don't forget to practice today <laughs> okay now we are on to the a note on terminology and chord symbols okay this is we are still in the basic part uh, above from the part one which we saw on the index so i think this one is the last part and this one is the most important one because i think uh, this okay what is this we'll just read it most working jazz musicians prefer easy to read short hand symbols both g7 and b13 and whatever all these four symbols you will see you can see on the screen mean the same thing okay which would you rather read okay i, I would read the first one for the beginner ja jazz presents a bewildering array of chord symbols you will soon find out that they are just different ways of writing the same few chords okay there is no one single set of standard chord symbols the lack of a universally agreed upon set of symbols is not a bad thing at all jazz is a living breathing growing constantly evolving art and is changing terminology reflects this yeah a c major 7 chord can be noted as okay, so c major 7 i guess is this if i'm not wrong please please don't hate me can be noted as c major 7 c capital m7 c6 okay c6 well, i thought that c6 was this okay not again well i thought was that uh, c6 is this whereas c7 is this i'm confused from the very first line okay if anyone knows the answer to this please please help me out guys okay a c major 7 chord can be noted as c major 7 c m7 c6 or c6 and a 9 chord or a c delta i will i am a science student so i'll read it as delta i don't know what they call this triangle in the music language but i i i i just express it as an as a delta and they all mean pretty much the same thing okay pretty much means c7 c6 uh, i'm not sure Okay. Many jazz musicians just write C. Okay, but C is this C major seven, nominal seven, C six. I feel like Freddie Mercury. In this book, I'll write C major seven as C delta. Okay, he he is gonna use C delta. Okay, we just need to. learn this that wherever we see c delta it means c major 7 chord a d minor 7 chord can be noted as d uh hyphen 7 d small m 7 or d m i 7 okay d minor 7 this this i guess okay this I like to use the minus sign as in D minus seven. Okay, hyphen or minus sign. The plus symbol C seven plus eleven and the sharp symbol C seven. I'll just zoom it so that you can see clearly. C seven sharp eleven both mean the same thing. Raise a note. The eleventh in this case a half step. Okay. A half step. I use the symbol sharp symbol in this book. Okay, so. Okay, we are talking about the C, and the eleventh note will be eleven, and they are telling us to raise it a half step, which means a uh, F sharp. So is the he did he mean this? I'm not sure. So please, please help me, guys. Can't say. this book is stuff 
Okay, so he is going to use the uh, sharp symbol in this book. Okay, that sounds like a problem to me. Uh, the flat symbol, flat symbol, or uh, the C7 flat 9 and the minus sign C7 minus 9 both mean the same thing. Lower a note, the 9 in this case a half step. Okay, so that's that makes sense because we know that a sharp means a half step up and a flat means a half step, half step down. And so the only thing he has done is that uh, he has replaced sharp with a plus sign and flat with a negative sign so that that makes sense and that is even easy to uh, remember the fourth and the eleventh are the same note in a chord the fourth and the eleventh note are same in a chord the fourth note in from a C major scale is C B E F and the eleventh will be G A B C D E F 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 okay so yeah he's right the fourth and the eleventh note in the case of C major is this F are same note in a chord. I like to use four on major and sus suspended chords. I guess I'm not wrong. C delta sharp four C seven four and eleven on dominant and minor chords. Okay, so he is just saying that for major chords he uses the fourth number 4 and for the minor chords he uses the 11th that's all you want to say the 6th and the 13th are the same notes within a chord ok let's check Standard practice is to use six on major and minor chords, C six, six, C C minus six, and thirteen on dominant chords. Okay, so here he stated that um, for the standard practice for the sixth and the thirteen most is that uh, we use six for major as well as minor chords, but we use thirteen for the dominant ones. I I don't know what a dominant chord is right now. Please, so, sorry. Many piano and guitar voicings for major 7 chords don't include the major 7th. You will see an occasional C delta chord in this book with no major 7 in the voicing shown. Yeah, I'll read it, read it again. Many piano and guitar voicings for major 7 chords don't include the major 7th. Okay. You will see an occasional C delta chord in this book with no major 7 in the voicing shown. I did not get it at all, but I'll try to understand it after the video ends. I used abbreviated numbers such as 3rd, 5th, 7th and so on when referring to intervals and notes in a specific chord such as the 5th of the G7 chord. I spell out the number as a word such as 3rd, 5th, 7th when referring to anything else such as the fourth mode of C major the cycle of fifths yeah I have heard about the cycle of fifths and how useful it is the seventh note of the scale and so on okay jazz musicians use the term scale and mode interchangeably and I will do the same okay, scale and mode I have heard about modes as well so let's see if it comes any further I make a distinction when the mode is in direct reference to its parent scale as in the D Dorian mode of the C major scale. Okay, so the D Dorian mode would be if I'm not wrong, please please make me make it, make it clear in the comments below. All the examples in this book are written in concert key. B flat and E flat instruments. If you are playing along with the original recording, don't forget to forget to transpose accordingly. Okay. Examples originally played by a bass clef instruments, trombone and bass are shown in the bass clef. Okay. A few piano examples have been transposed down an octave, so you don't have to read too many major lines here. Thank you. Major lines are like worst thing. Okay, here we are. Here we have some terms, lingo, musicians, nicknames. Why should I read musicians' nicknames? Okay. 
terms and lingo. How many, how many of them are there? We'll just go through it very quickly because I, until now I have whatever I have read, I have caught only 40% of the part that I have read, and 60% has just you know gone over me. Alien, the sixth mode of the major scale, also known as the natural minor scale. Natural minor scale. Okay, I know that. Alteration, also known as altered mode, the B9, sharp 9, sharp 11, B5, sharp 5, B13 of a chord. Altered mode, the seventh mode of the melodic minor scale. Avoid note, a note from the scale of a chord that sounds dissonant. When held against the chord, the term usually refers to the fourth of a major chord and the eleventh of a dominant chord. Bag, also known as bag of tricks, a jazz musician's repertoire of licks, patterns, and so on, often used in proprietary form as in Jackie's bag. Okay, I, I got that too. Ballad, slow tune. I know that. Bebop, the revolutionary style of jazz that evolved in the early 1940s. Okay, Bird, Charlie Parker. Okay, so Bird is a nickname of some jazz musician called Charlie Parker, I guess. Blowing choruses, the choruses of a tune that are improvised. Okay, so improvisation means blowing choruses. Break, breaks typically, typically <coughs> occur at the beginning of a solo. The soloist plays alone as the rest of the band lays out usually for two four or eight bars. One of the greatest is Lee Morgan's break at the beginning of his solo of John Coltrane's Locomotion uh, on Coltrane's album Blue Train. Okay. Bridge. The B section of a tune usually on an AABA or ABA tune, sometimes called the channel. Did not get this one. Cadenza. An improvised rubato ending of inter indeterminate length played by the soloist while the rhythm section lays out. Changes the chords to a tune, channel, C bridge, chart, arrangement, lead sheet, okay, chops, technique, choruses, chorus, once through a tune. Okay. Makes sense. Circle of fourths, also known as cycle of fourths. Okay. Well, I had heard about cycle of fifths and I have and this is the first time I am reading, reading something called the cycle of fourths. A circular arrangement of all 12 notes of the chromatic scale. Okay, a circular arrangement of all 12 notes of a chromatic scale. I know what the chromatic scale is. Yeah, I know. Let me know. When viewed counterclockwise, each note is a fourth higher than the preceding note. When viewed clockwise, each note is fourth lower than the preceding note. See also cycle of fifths. Yeah, that's quite similar to the cycle of fifths actually. Clave, pronounced clave. Okay, sorry. Clave, clave. A two bar rhythmic pattern that almost all Afro Cuban musician is based upon. Common tones, notes that are found in the chords or and or scales of two or more consecutive chords. Cycle of fifths, also known as cycle of fifths, circle of fifths. A circular arrangement of 12 modes of the chromatic scale when viewed counterclockwise, each note is a fifth lower than the preceding note. When viewed clockwise, each note is a fifth higher than the preceding note. See also cycle of fourths. Yeah, I have already seen that. Deceptive cadence. A fifth chord, a five chord chord resolving some place other than down a fifth. Did not get that one. Diatonic. Chords with a particular key. C delta D minus 7. E whatever it is. A diatonic to the key of C. Okay. D is 7. A diatonic to Chords within a particular key. Okay. I mean the chords in one key are called as diatonic. Yeah. Diminished scale. A scale alternating half steps and whole steps or vice versa. This dizzy gillips gills by okay so that's some artist whose name is short shortened from dizzy to dis. Dorian mode the second mode of the 
major skill also the chord derived from that mode yeah i had noted two again i had just played one double diminished chord two diminished seven chords played at the same time by a pianist and eight note chord including all the notes of a diminished scale not again okay we'll read it again two diminished seven chords played at the same time by a pianist okay and eight note chord including all the notes of a diminished scale okay wait double time change the tempo to one that's twice as fast the change is also moving twice as fast okay just doubling it up and this double time feeling change the tempo to one at one that is twice the fast but with the change is still moving at the speed of the original tempo okay so this double time means changing your playing with the tempo like if the tempo was 40 bpm at first and you were playing according to 40 bpm and now it is 80 bpm so you will have to play like in the, in the speed of 80 bpm but double time feeling is like we change the tempo we double the tempo from 40 to 80 but we are still playing in the 40 bpm i hope you get that eights or trade eights okay two or more players each in turn trading eight bar improvisations usually for one or more choruses after the regular solos okay this is something related to live performing of a band so i don't know anything about it ending the last part the last part of a tune often specially arranged okay that makes sense ending the most important part after the you know beginning okay so we'll just um, take a pause over here and we will continue day 2 uh, in the next video thank you guys okay let's